Good morning. We welcome you to this our broadcast for Sunday, the 23rd of May of the year 2020. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And truly, God is good this morning, and we praise him and thank him for this another day. My brothers and sisters, we are First Church of Christ Holiness. Our mission of our church here at 789 Edgemont Avenue is to preach, proclaim, spread, encourage, and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ in all parts of the world. Again, we welcome you and hope that this past week has been a week that you have had your time with the Lord and he has been truly good to you. For our scripture reading this morning, I would like for you to turn your attention to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. I'll be reading a few verses of the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. And the word of the Lord from the King James Version, say, I'm sorry, from the New International Version says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were called were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought, forth, brought God a better offering than Cain. By faith, he was commended as righteous. When God spoke well of his offering, and by faith, Abel still speaks even through, though he died. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. I have read verses 1 through verse 6. May the Lord add a blessing to his printed word. Lord God, as we come this morning, and we are assured that as the, the word says, that faith is confidence in knowing you. And Father God, we know you this morning. We thank you for this day, for this week, for this another Sunday morning, that we are able to come together to worship you. We thank you for how you have worked through this pandemic. You have caused many of us to get out of our comfort zones, find new ways of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, drawing us closer to you during this terrible time that we have been through. But Lord God, the light is now at the end of this tunnel. And we are praying now that you would keep our hearts and our minds, that we will continue to worship you in the beauty of holiness. And not only worship you, Lord, but that those who don't know you, that they will surrender their lives to you today. Lord, we just ask for your presence in this place, your presence upon your people, your presence, O oh Father, that the hand of the enemy will be stayed. There's so much confusion, so much hatred, so much bitterness, so many hearts, Lord, and even within the church, the body of Christ, we are finding, finding that there is division because we don't want to follow your word. It's not about what Brother Phillips says. It's not about what Bishop Kajo says. It's not about what other saints says. It's about your word this morning, O oh God. And my prayer today is that you would speak to the hearts of your people, that you would draw them closer to you, that our hearts and our minds will be opened to the word, and that we will live our lives in accordance to your word. Lord, send the Holy Spirit to your people. Refresh us. Renew us. Encourage us. That, oh God, that we will stand in the midst of these trying days. That, oh God, that we will be your light upon the hill. We pray this morning for those in leadership positions in our land. Oh God, you know the hearts of these men and women. Some of the things that we are seeing, they make us question. Is it truly a child of God? Oh God, oh God, have your way today. Have your way. Look upon the president of this nation. Look upon the governor of this state. Look upon the mayor of this city. And as you do for them, look upon all mayors and governors throughout all of the 50 states. God, we need you. We need your power in our life, and we need a revival. So God, send this revival to revive hearts of men and women 
that, oh, Father, that our young people may know you. Oh, God, bless today and sanctify. Touch those that are ill this morning. Strengthen their bodies, their souls, and their minds that they may continue to walk in accordance to your word. And, Lord, we'll give you the praise, the honor and glory that is due you. We ask it this morning in the powerful name of your son, Jesus Christ. In his name's sake, we pray. Amen. Truly, the Lord is good, and we thank the Lord. If you would like to support our ministry, there are a couple of ways that you may do so. You may mail a check or money order payable to First Church of Christ Holiness and send it to 789 Edgemont Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana. The zip code here is 46208. You may also set us up as a direct payee through your financial institution. If you need additional information on how to do that, please call us here at the church. Our telephone number is 317-924-0534. Finally, if you are a PayPal user, you may find us at paypal.me backslash F-C-O-C-H-U-S-A-I-N-D-Y. Any three of these me me methods will work. So please support our ministry and we'll be so honored to, to re recognize your contribution. God has been good to us. I'm stumbling a little this morning. My sinus and allergies are acting up, but I'm still praising God for who he is. We wanna now go to our spoken word this morning. We wanna hear what God has to say to us. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to First Church of Christ Holiness' stream. I'm glad that you all are streaming in today. Thank you for still supporting us throughout this entire uh, coronavirus process of streaming in online. And so uh, thank you guys for tun tuning in Sunday after Sunday. Um, let's get right into it. Uh, Father God, I thank you for this time that we have together. I pray that this message will go out and be able to uh, impact the lives of those that listen to you. I pray that this will uh, strengthen, motivate, and encourage those that need it, Father. Um, I pray that your word will be one that we will meditate on day and night, uh, hour by hour, God, so that we can have a, a, a spiritual growth that uh, supersedes the years that we've that we've uh, given our life to you. I, I pray that we, we get better and better each year, God, that, that we live, God, that you give us the gift of, of breath and life. So I, I pray that this message will be just another tool that uh, the people of God can use and to draw from uh, to get your, your guidance and instruction, Father. These things are asked in your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So today I want to talk a little bit more and kind of piggyback off of what we talked about last Sunday, which was the, the, the three Hebrew boys and how they went through a terrible time in the furnace. However, it became something uh, a little bit more uh, a revelation, if you will, that, that when, you when you depend on Christ and, and you depend on God, he's right there with you in the thick of it. When, when everything else is, is falling apart, when you depend on God, you'll find out that he will stand by you. And, and the, like I said last Sunday, the three Hebrew boys may not have known that they may have been delivered from the fire, but because they depended on God, they were able to walk out of there unfazed. And so today, I want to talk about obedience and how that a relationship can start to develop over time, that, that relationship with God that you are not afraid of any situation that you may face. I want to talk about deliberate obedience, which is the, the sermon title today, and I'm going to go back um, to Acts 9, and I know we talk a lot about Paul, but today I'm going to talk about who he was before he became uh, one of the greatest instruments used by God in the New Testament. His name was Saul before he was converted, and we'll see right here in verse uh, 1. I'm going to take you back. So Acts chapter 9, verses 1 says, But Paul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, 
went to the high priest and asked him for letters to uh, the synagogues at Damascus so that he, if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So let's stop right there. Uh, Paul, or Saul rather, in that time he was the, the, the Jew of all Jews. He was able to, from a young age, go and, and learn about uh, the, the, the Pentateuch or, or the, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, to where he could legit verbatimly regurgitate everything that it said. And, and that was a, an extreme event. And so now you got this guy, this Pharisee, who, who knows the words of God, but he's not performing the way that God would want him to perform, which is, which is strengthening the church by preaching who Christ was. And so in this, in this, this scene, we see Saul going to the boss, if you will, and saying, I need some warrants to go and out into these places, specifically Damascus, and I want to go get all those who are preaching and teaching and even listening to uh, this, this Christian, this Christ theme, uh, kind of, it, it was a phase that he thought was going on. He wanted to rid uh, his church of what he thought uh, his religion should look like. He wanted to render uh, anybody against them. He wanted to put them to death and, and bound them and take them into custody. And so that's where we are right here where Paul is, is coming to the high priest and saying, I need some warrants to go get these people. And so we, we find that uh, he's, he's on the road to Damascus with his, with his crew. Uh, this blinding light knocks him off his horse. He gets up, and it, it, it's, it's now, it's, it's an uh-oh scenario because now he, he knows his eyes are open, but he can't see. So that's where we are. Uh, he, he, hears, he hears this voice that says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what to do what you are to do. Uh, verse 7 says, the men who were traveling with him, his crew, stood speechless, hearing the voice, but not seeing anyone. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were open, he saw nothing. So they led him by hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days, he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. And so we see right now that, uh, oh, I'll tell you that Saul was was respected. He was a high official in the in the in the church uh, or in that that religion, uh, that region that he was in. He was a, a high official. People respected him, uh, and but they were also very fearful of him. Paul had authority. Now we see when he meets God and he meets Christ in his holy state. He automatically becomes humbled. He goes from this powerful leader, this powerful man to somebody that fell off a horse and now has to be held by hand onto a city. First of all, I would think that's pretty embarrassing. You've been riding horses your entire life, uh, and now you, you're getting knocked off the horse by a, a shining bright light. Not only that, but now he can't see. So you have fear, stress, worry, and his pride all coming in at one time. It's overwhelming, and now he's starting to be humbled. Not only, not only did, he, did, he get, did he fall off the horse and people had to help him, but now he's blind. Now he's blind, and, and, and for three days, for 72 hours, he's without sight, and he neither ate nor drank. So right now, if, if you're a health person, you can, you can kind of see that his body was even detoxing at this moment. Nothing was going in, but a lot was coming out. 
I'll say that again. Nothing was going in, but a lot was coming out. Now, verse 10, this is where I want us to focus on. Verse, the, verse 10 through um, 19, it says, Now, there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And this is not to be confused with the Ananias and Sapphira, the one that lied to the Holy Spirit. Not, no, not him. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer to, for the sake of my name. I want you to remember this statement right here. So Ananias departed and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and entered uh, from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and ate, uh, and, and he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. The call to obedience is, is so important as Christians now. It's been be important before, you know, but now when we are seeing life at its worst moments, we're, we're starting to get plagued by sickness, we're starting to get plagued by violence, on top of violence and more violence, and and I may not have seen this in the past because I'm fairly new to this earth, but I see things getting worse and worse and worse year by year. Even people that I talk to that are a lot older than me, they said 2020 was the worst year for them. And even today, the next year, 2021, it's, it's still going on. And I'm not a scientist, but... I predict that times will continue to get worse and worse, and that's okay. It's okay because when we chose to give our lives to Christ, we were able to adopt his teachings, which teach that we shouldn't be worried, for one. Two, that in all things, God will be there, like we learned last week, and, and finally, the things that we go through, the things that we face in life are only necessary for our, our growth. But it's very important that we realize it all starts with obedience. Now, God will bless you and he will give you things of your, your heart and he'll give you things and, uh, that, will, that will really show you who he is, essentially, but he does that for everyone. He does that for the sinner. He does that for the saint. But there is something about the one that calls on his name. There's something about the one that, that listens to him, that follows him, that, that, oh, that believes and loves and has faith in him that he takes care of the most. Now, I got eight principles I want you to to listen, and if you're a note taker, I, I'll, you should write these down. Number one, Jesus calls us to obey. Two, obedience is an act of worship. Three, God rewards obedience. Number four is obedience to God proves that we love him. Five, obedience uh, to God demonstrates faith. Six, the be, uh, disobedience leads to sin and death. 
7, obedience is better than sacrifice. And finally, through obedience, we experience the blessing of the holy of holy living. Um, we experience the blessings of holy living. Jesus is the only one that walked perfectly. Right? So once we follow this, this word of God and we start to adopt and believe and buy into what the word of God says, and we allow the Holy Spirit to transform us from the inside, we start to grow in holiness. Um, now, this is not something that will, it's not a 60-second, 60 60-day 60 uh, trial where you, you, you know God and you read and search him and now you have everything figured out. It's a process. And this process is called sanctification which can also be described as spiritual growth. Uh, the more we read God's word and spend time with him, and the more uh, we allow the Holy Spirit to guide our lives, the more we become like Christ. And the more we become like Christ, the more people we are able to affect. And so that's why I wanted to talk about Ananias today, because his obedience started a fire that exploded in the New Testament. Now, you may think that, you know, you want people to come to know God and to, and to experience true Christianity and love through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, you may be driving down the street or you may see somebody that may need a little bit of, of encouragement. And God says to you, I, I think that should be you. Now you say, whoa, God, I, I know that that person needs some help. But could you send somebody else? You see, a lot of times we want people to experience the good things of God, but we don't want to be the one to deliver it. You see, sometimes that blessing that that person is waiting on is you. You see, we, we would question God sometimes and say, you know, God, I, I, <laughs> I'm for it, but I don't want to be the one to do it. And, and, and we want somebody else to take our place to do that. But God is wanting them to, to feel his glory and feel his love, but he wants to use you to do it. You see, because of Ananias' obedience, Paul wrote these books of the Bible, Galatians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Romans, Philemon, Philippians, and 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. That's powerful, right? Because Ananias did what he was supposed to do and, and obeyed God, he went and laid his hands on, on Paul, and now Paul is responsible single-handedly for spreading Christianity throughout the entire Roman Empire, an empire that was still scary back then, an empire that was known for the most atrocious deaths and the beatings and brut brutality at the, at, and, and, and power and strength of the Roman army. You see, Paul was bold and he spread Christianity throughout that entire empire. And because of that, Paul was able to affect the people in Ephesians as well. The people in Galatia, the people in uh, Corinth and uh, Thessalonica. You, you see, because Ananias was obedient, Paul was able to do amazing things. Because of Ananias' obedience, you and I now today in 2021 can read these books and, and draw from the pain and triumph of being a Christian. And yes, I do say pain and I do say triumph because we will experience pain. You see, I think that a lot of us believe as, as Christians, we want to live a comfortable life. And I've said this before, we want to be comfortable here but this is not where our, our, our home and this is not our resting place. This is not a time to be comfortable. 
And you see, because we have a job to do here. And while there are nice things that we can enjoy as Christians here on earth, the primary function of a Christian is to spread the good news of Christ Jesus to all who would listen here, all who wouldn't listen and wouldn't hear, but to spread and plant that seed so that the Holy Spirit can come in and do his job to water it. Now, I, I, I saw this video on social media, and man, I, I'll be honest with you, it almost, it almost got me to tears because it talked about how, how God, his, his place is in heaven. Jesus' life was here on earth, but his place is also in heaven. But there is one. There's one called the Holy Spirit who is God, whose place is here with us. And you see, when God shows up, the Godhead in its entirety shows up. And I don't know if you, you heard me, but when God shows up in a situation in your life, it is not only the Holy Spirit, but it is the Godhead three in one. And when we trust and obey him and we, we give our lives over, completely over, not just some of it, not just the, the part on Sunday, not just our, our, our times when we feel motivated, but when we give ourselves to Christ completely, we will start to see God in every aspect of our lives. And, and slowly but surely, we will start to change from the inside out. I want that. I love that. I want to be able to go outside and, and, and be able to view and see God in everything. And that's what we can do. You see, God is our Father. He's there for us throughout our entire lives. And He is only wanting obedience. Not just passive obedience. And what I mean by passive obedience is, you know, going to church. Reading your Bible here and here and now and again and, and praying every every often or every so often. You know, there, there's there's this male and I can't think of his name for the life of me and I, it, it's going to bother me. But there's a male that uh, um, I want to say I think he's a minister. But what he does is that he says that I never spend more than 20 minutes in prayer but I never go 20 minutes without praying. And just imagine going throughout your day and you just constantly, you know, speaking with God. Going out your day and, you know, you're driving and you, you're just having a talk with the Lord. Or you may be cooking and you're having a, a word with God. And, and don't get me wrong, a lot of a lot of us actually do that. We'll just find ourselves doing something random and we just want to talk to God. I say that's a moment where we can, we can build off of. You and I together as, as, we, as we work this and walk this journey as being a Christian together, what we can do is we can take those moments as, a, as an indicator, a clue that God wants to talk to us. You see, you see what we believe is that prayer... Not all, but a lot of us believe that prayer is, is just, just one, this one verse where it's one role. But, it, but God is saying, this is a dialogue. I'm talking to you. You're talking to me. This is something that we, we develop over a, a, a time. And, and the closer you get to me, the clearer you will hear my voice. And you'll start to see things in your life change. And then you'll, you'll know that it's God. You will start to look at things differently. You will start to look at issues and, and problems that arise in your life as opportunities to, one, give God glory for it, and two, to be able to allow God to let that happen in your life. And that goes back to the, my, my seventh point, which is obedience is better than sacrifice. You see, we want to make our own decisions in life, and it may not be 
designed by God, and it actually may be sinful, but we want that pleasure here and now, <laughs> but, and, but we sacrifice something also when we do that. We taint our spirits instantly when we do that. I know you feel it. You know you're not supposed to be doing something, and you do it, and you, and you get this guilt, and it's just like, you know, I'll just ask for forgiveness later. But that's not how we, we operate. In fact, Paul says that we absolutely should not do that. We should absolutely, absolutely not sin knowing that we will be forgiven by grace. Yes, there is grace by all means. There is, but we should not be sinning, premeditated sin. We, we shouldn't do it. We shouldn't do it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And I wonder how much or how many blessings we have sacrificed without even knowing it. You see, it, 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 like I said, it, it, it all starts with obedience. And the moment that we learn to obey, we will start to see that it's not something that I have to do, but something that I want to do. You see, because God will put himself in your situation. You'll see an issue, but then you'll also see it start to work out for you. And you're, and you're like, well, <laughs> DeMarcus, I don't see that. I'm, I've been going through this, this issue and this trial for months, some maybe even years. And you're still saying, well, I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I, I do want to believe in God, but I mean, everything that you're saying, it sounds good, but how does it apply to me? Because I'm still going through something. If you feel like that, and I'm talking to you, I want you to know that you're, you, you are not alone. There are times where I feel like, man, God, you know, I've been praying about this so long. What is the, what's the why behind this? You ever, we ever wondered that? You've been going through something for so long, and now you just, you're at the point where it's like, why, God? What's the purpose in this? And so that, that's, and when we get to that part in our lives, when we get to that moment where we, where we face uh, God one-on-one and, and, you're, and you're just asking your, him, why? You must go back to the scriptures. And you must read the, 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 the part here. I'm going to show you what Ananias where he where he said this said he he because he knew he knew who Paul was or Saul at that moment he knew who he was and he knew that he was a a killer of of Christians but when he when God said go and I highlighted this uh, in bold it. when God said go it, it, in verse seventeen. It says, so Ananias departed. Ananias had that, that part where he, he faced God like, why? Why send me? Why me? This guy kills, but, but Ananias trusted God with his life. And because of that, Paul was able to do amazing things. Now, what I like about God in this moment is, and, and, and this actually was a benefit to Ananias, God explained himself. He told Ananias the things that Paul had already seen. He told Ananias that Paul will be expecting you. He told Ananias that you're going you're gonna to lay his hands and he's going to be able to see again. But see, a lot of times God won't tell us the whole situation. Because he's trying to test your faith. Will you believe in God enough to just follow him and be obedient? And I know in this day and age it's very hard because seeing is believing. And that's what, that's what society tells us is that we all have this Missouri type 
of mindset, the, sh it's the show me state. Show me and, and I believe you. But that's not how Christians operate. We operate in a, a mode that says, even though I don't see the point of this, I know God is at the point of this. And when we do that and, and when we understand and identify God as the head, then we can put our trust in him and he will move in that situation. If you go down to verse 18, after verse 17, it says, And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. That song, Amazing Grace, uh, it talks about, I once was blind, but now I see. You see, when we start to, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll take this from a personal experience. When growing up in, in church, I, I always, I, I knew the word of God, and, and I knew the scriptures. I knew the songs. I was able to recite, you know, scripture after scripture. I was able to go to the Bible, and if you, you know, told me a little bit, a snippet about a story, I can find it for you. Um, but my heart wasn't completely in it. I didn't develop my, my true Christianity until I got to Indianapolis. Now, that's 18 years, you know, in Chicago. Well, I want to say 18 because I was not doing anything from one through four. I was kind of just living my own life. But when I, when I decided to give my life to the Lord at a young age... I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't know what all that entailed until I got to a position in my life where I realized that if, if I am only obedient, God would be able to show me things that I wouldn't have normally seen on my own. And so when we come to church and we blindly, you know, obey God by just, you know, doing the status quo of Christianity, going to church, listening to gospel music, all that. Our eyes are still closed. You know, we, we still can't see clearly. Now, once we start to obey God in the fullness of ob obedience, then he starts to open our eyes and we start to see things a lot more clearer. You see, I want to be like Ananias, and I want us to, as a, as a church to be like Ananias. And I, I want everyone that, <laughs> that claims that Christ is the king of their lives, I want all of us to be able to be like Ananias. Who was Ananias? He was somebody that, that at the end of the day, he followed God. He, he was obedient. You see, there, there are blessings out there for us. There's prosperity out there for us. And it may not be in the way that you think it is. It may not be a new car, a new house, uh, new whatever. It, it, but it, it's definitely prosperous. It's prosperity when you follow Christ because you start to get things. And when I say get things, you start to, ah, it's an aha moment. I get why this happened. I get my job. And, and, and the, the one thing that you will understand is your purpose. Because all of us have different purpose for our lives. And I pray that today that, that we adopt the spirit of obedience in everything that we do. Even when it's uncomfortable. Because there are times where I just, well, God tells me something. And I'm like, oh, God, I don't, I don't really, really want to do this. But once we obey, you know, God rewards obedience. In fact, I, I said this uh, a couple sermons ago, is that there's one time in the Bible where, where God says, test me, and it's with your money. And if you, if you did that, I, I promise you, have you done that yet? You can put it in the comments if you've, your testimony, if you've had some money that was supposed to go somewhere else, 
but you gave, you were obedient and gave that to God or whatever, and, and you experienced something, go, go put that in the comments because a lot of us need to hear that. A lot of us need to see that. I, we thrive off of testimonies because we know that God is working. So if you have testimonies, go ahead and, and, and put it in the comments. But I want us to have that spirit of obedience first because we can't, we can't experience God and his true identity if we're not obedient to him. 365. Pray with me. Father, I, I, I come to you and I thank you, Lord, for, for who you are, God, the, the forgiving, loving, powerful God that you are. I pray that we are able to break everything down to the basics and just start with obedience to you. I pray that we will not just go off of motivation or when it feels good to serve you, God. I, I, I pray that we make it deliberate, Father. Despite how we feel, I'm going to give you my obedience in my life, Father. Help us to have that mindset. Help us to be a people that others can look to and look at and see you, God. Most of all, God, help us not to get down on ourselves when we do mess up. Because that's one of the tactics of the devil is to make us feel bad and, and make us feel unworthy. But, God, you came here to die for us. So I think that we're worth it, Father. I thank you, Lord, for who you are. And I thank you, Lord, for selecting us, God, to be a part of your family. I think sometimes we forget that. It's you who chose us, Father. Not the other way around. Help us to give our lives to you. Every day, God. These things are asked in your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you don't know Christ, I encourage you to, to read about him and to experience him and to try him. Because when you do and you give your life to Christ, you will start to see that life is, is worth it. That the things we go through are for a reason. And if you don't know God, you, you know, it, it's easy to, to become a family member. All, all you say are these words, Father, I give my life to you. There's no one else that I want. Accept me, forgive me, and strengthen me in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you said that, I'm telling you there's a party going on in heaven right now because God loves you. And if you do know Christ and you turned away from him, it's still okay because the door hadn't closed on us yet. <laughs> And there's still time. But don't be a gambling man or a woman and think that you have time. Because nobody knows the day or the hour or the second in which the Son of Man will come back for his church. And I want you to be there. I want all of us to be together in heaven, worshiping God and just being with him. So if that's you, and you found yourself slacking a little bit on, on the word, you could pick it up again. Like I said, his arms are always open. I pray that we become strong together over the course of the remaining months we have left. Wow, it's almost June. Halfway into the year, and man, it, it's crazy, and the time is flying. Soon things are start, going to start opening up. I don't know how you feel about the vaccines or not, but uh, things are going to start opening up and things are going to start 
kind of slowly getting back to normal. Don't take for granted what we went through and get back wherever you were before the, the pandemic. I pray that this pandemic, you were able to see God in a whole new way. Because when God want to shut something down, he can do it. I pray that this, this virus did transformed you. Maybe not from, the, from a physical standpoint, but I pray that seeing it and dealing with it, I pray that you come to know God a little bit closer because we legit just went through a plague. <laughs> it plagued the world. I can only imagine a week of this stuff like Moses went through of different things, <laughs> right? The Egyptians had to go through all that. Don't be like them Egyptians. Don't think that, man, this is, this is just life. No, don't. It, this, it, 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 things happen for a reason. I pray that you will look at this virus, this situation, as a sign that we should probably get even closer to God. Amen. God bless.